Lowering the cooldown timers of your bridge officer abilities is a really great way of improving the performance of pretty much any ship build that you might have. So let's talk about the three best ways to do that. Now, there are a number of different ways of lowering your bridge officer cooldowns, more than just like the main three I'll be going over in this video. But these three methods are going to be generally the more effective methods of doing so and are generally regarded as the most popular versions of doing this throughout the community. The first method we'll be talking about is what is commonly referred to as an ox to bat build. The reason for this is that it utilizes the ability auxiliary power to emergency battery or what we typically call ox to bat for short. What this method requires is two seats of auxiliary power to emergency batteries, as well as three technician duty officers that have this specific ability, which is to reduce the recharge time of your bridge officer abilities by 10% every time you use auxiliary power to emergency battery. So these, these guys. So every time you're hitting one of these with these duty officers, you are reducing the cooldowns of all of your other bridge officer abilities. So like if you see right here, if I just start spamming these. See, they're all going on cooldown, but once we get to Ox to Bat, that cooldown jumped down. And you can see the other one is on uh, on minimal cooldown. That's because, you know, they have a shared cooldown. But once we hit the other one, bam, either they all go off cooldown or they're suddenly on their minimal cooldown. Now, getting your bridge officer abilities to their minimal cooldowns is kind of the goal here. That means uh, getting them to their minimal cooldown means that uh, they are the cooldown is lower to the point where it cannot be lowered any further. Uh, the way you can tell this is here. Let's get a few of these on cooldown. Uh, see this, how the icon is kind of rotating, you know, clockwise. That means it is on cooldown, but it can still be further reduced. But uh, here, let's uh, pop some of these off. Yeah, I see how fire it will. Uh, now the slider is kind of going down, uh, you know, from top to bottom on it. That means it is on it is on minimal cooldown, and that means it can no longer be any further reduced in cooldown. Oxtabat is one of the oldest methods of lowering your cooldowns. Uh, this, we've been doing this for years at this point, uh, probably closer to a decade at this point, uh, or you know, whenever the duty officer system was introduced. I don't remember when, but it's it's a very old method, but it is still very it is still very tried and true. It's one of the most reliable methods of guaranteeing that your cooldowns are going to get as low as possible. It's also one of the more budget friendly options because these technician officers with the uh, cooldown reduction ability every time you use Ox to Bat, uh, this, these technicians, uh, they're basic technicians or they're basic uh, duty officers. So they're not like exclusive to a lockbox or anything. They are like just, you know, part of the original set of duty officers that were released in the beginning of the game. So you can get these fairly easily. One of the best ways of grinding out purple level versions of these, so the very rare versions, the max level versions, is by getting the mission train for the Patran cluster all the way through to the point where you can do the repeatable mission at the end. So you go up to the Patran cluster, you do all the mission trains uh, on at that cluster, and then once you get to the end of it, you can do the repeatable mission, and that repeatable mission has a chance to drop a very rare technician. And specifically, I think it's actually 10 of 10 over here. So you get uh, the doing that over and over again means you'll be able to get multiple copies of 10 of 10. You can also get technicians with this ability from other sources. Obviously, they also drop from various duty officer packs because, I mean, this is one of the Dosai guys. Those are from the Gamma Quadrant packs. So, yeah, you can get some of these guys. Um, but there's also the ones that can drop randomly from the Fleet Starbase because there is a vendor on the Fleet Starbase where you can buy random duty officers with fleet credits and uh, technicians have a chance to drop there. Uh, if you're going to go that route, I would recommend specifically buying the engineering duty officers because uh, you'll actually increase the chance of getting a technician duty officer because technicians are engineering duty officers so you want to focus on the engineering track and then so it, it, it's it's not a guarantee obviously because it's still very rng based because it's a random duty officer but if you have an abundance of fleet credits that's a good way to maybe uh try to get uh some easy technicians possibly maybe hopefully if you're still leveling up your duty officer tracks, you know, these things, uh, you also have a chance to get free technicians from here. Like if you uh, level up the engineering one up to maximum and then uh, you'll be able to pick up a free uh, technician that will have the ox to bat ability. So that's a good way to get some easy ones. I don't know if any of the other tracks have a free technician as well. Nope, just engineering. So that's just the one free purple uh, technician you'll be able to get by leveling up your uh, duty officer tracks, but you know, still better than nothing. 
Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to pick up purple level duty officers like right away, especially if you're still fa fairly early in the game. If you're still wanting to implement this method, you can use lower level technicians. So you know, just use whatever ones you have, if you, even if they're just like common, uncommon, you know, whatever rarity you have. You can use those in the meantime and then just, you know, over time work on getting the purple ones. So don't feel like you have to go all in right away with this method. As I said earlier, Oxtabat is probably the most budget friendly option for reducing your bridge officer cooldowns because all it requires is three technician duty officers, which you can obtain, you know, through th through free to play methods and the uh, Oxtabat uh, seats right there or the bridge officer abilities. Those you can just pick up from or Oxtabat one and two. You can pick up from any ship vendor Oxtabat three. You'll either have to get crafted by an engineer or buy it on the exchange. But again, it's it's Oxtabat three. It's not going to be an expensive ability on the exchange. Oh, that reminds me, I should have said the uh, the technician duty officers, you can buy them on the exchange as well. Just be sure you're buying the ones with the right abilities um, and those uh, uh, the duty officers that you can pick up at the fleet star base uh, while you're uh, picking. the If you're going that route, uh, you get ones that you don't want. You can sell those on the exchange as well. So that's uh, I often like to use that as sort of a, a way of turning my uh, uh, fleet credits into energy credits by buying random duty officers and then selling them on the exchange. So that's uh a route to go with that if you're using that to buy uh to get technicians you can you know kind of get some extra ec on the side for any of the duty officers you don't want or if you just happen to get an extra technician that's even better because those will actually sell very well but there are also some downsides to an ox to bat build one of which is that it consumes all of your auxiliary power uh using the ability auxiliary power to emergency battery it just eats up your auxiliary power and then feeds it to your other subsystems which is kind of a downer because there are a number of abilities and consoles that do feed off of or actually directly need auxiliary power like uh fleet power network array for example uh its power uh it's it's able to increase the uh firing cycle haste of your directed energy weapons but the amount of haste it gets will directly scale with your ox power so if you d if you're ditching all of your ox power for this you are drastically uh you're drastically hurting this console ability so on this build uh on an ox to bat build like this fleet power network fleet power network array really isn't going to be as useful as it could be otherwise it's also why an ox to bat build really isn't useful on full science builds like epg builds or control builds because those are uh very uh auxiliary power is very necessary for those builds because a lot of those exotic abilities uh feed off of uh auxiliary power in the same way that your energy weapons feed off of your weapons power the other downside with an ox to bat build is that it kind of takes up a lot of space like you you need two seats of emergency power or you need two seats of auxiliary power to emergency battery so that's two engineering seats out the window right there and then it also takes up half of your duty officer slots right there in the early stages of the game, this may not be that big of a deal to you, but once you start getting to the more end game level stuff and you start unlocking cooler stuff, you know, once you start, you know, earning stuff or just, you know, you, you want to start screwing around with more stuff that you just could be fun or that would be more beneficial to your build, an ox to bat build is going to take up quite a lot of space. I almost forgot about this last part. How best to use an ox to bat build? Now, see, when you're using a spam bar like I like to do, so that's when you have like everything tied into uh, like a one key that you can just repeatedly spam. You usually put it on the space bar. See, lets me use my abilities really quickly. Uh, if you're using this ability, if you're using this method, you want to make sure that your two seats of auxiliary power to uh, or auxiliary power to emergency battery are at the end of all of your abilities, because the way this works is these only start working if all your abilities are already on cooldown. Like that so you want to make sure that they're already on cooldown when you are using your ox to bat ability so make sure your ox to bat is at or near the end of your spam bar console i don't know if this applies to you because i know you guys can put bridge officer abilities on automatic but i don't know if it can like prioritize one before the other i think it just fires them off whenever they fire off so uh, if you can try to prioritize your other abilities first but if not you know, you know i don't know what to tell you there the next method to reducing your bridge officer cooldowns is called improved photonic officer and that's because it utilizes a starship trait of the same name of the same name improved photonic officer what this does is it extends the duration of a bridge officer ability called photonic officer and what photonic officer does is reduce the bridge officer cooldowns of any of your other active uh, bridge officer abilities on cooldown you might be asking well if there's already a bridge officer ability that reduces my other bridge officer abilities cooldowns why shouldn't i be using that all the time well 
Honestly, it's not a bad ability to be using on a regular basis, especially when like mixed in with some of the other methods as well. Like if you're short on one thing, you can like use Photonic Officer to supplement it. But with Improved Photonic Officer, you can basically guarantee that this thing is up pretty much 100% of the time. Because the reason we don't use this a lot on other methods, uh, especially like on its own, is because that a Photonic Officer, uh, its cooldown cannot be shortened. So it's always going to have the cooldown that it has. So it's tough to get it up 100% of the time without improved Photonic Officer. One of the things with Photonic Officer is that you really wanna make sure that you have Photonic Officer 2. Photonic Officer 1 can work, but Photonic Officer 2 is generally better just because, I mean, it's it's the second version. Of course, it's better. Photonic Officer 3, though, that's kind of overkill. If you have room for, for Photonic Officer 3, at that point, you're better off using something like Gravity Well or, you know, some other science ability that will, you know, be more beneficial to your damage. So Photonic Officer 2 is generally the target with this method, you know, especially in conjunction with something else like Improved Photonic Officer. How this one works is while Photonic Officer is active, it will continually reduce the cooldowns of your other Bridge Officer abilities. So you just activate it, and now it's active, and now your other Bridge Officer cooldowns will shorten while this is still active. See how it's kind of jumping? So it's not something that'll take effect immediately like Ox to Bat, so it's more of a gradual thing, but it'll get there. See, look, that just went on minimal cooldown right there. This method is most commonly used on science builds like EPG and control builds, largely because one, you need a good amount of science seeing in order to use it because Photonic Officer 2 is a Lieutenant Commander science ability, but also because Improved Photonic Officer, the Starship trait, uh, gives a sizable buff to exotic damage, which, you know, EPG builds, they're all, they're all about exotic damage, so this is already a good trait to have, so they kind of go hand in hand. But that said, you don't need to have this on a science uh, on a science build. You can use this on pretty much any uh, uh, you can use this on pretty much any build you want as long as you have the room for the starship trait and the bridge officer ability. So the upsides with this one is that well, you just kind of you know let it run and it goes. So it's it's also fairly reliable as long as you have the starship trait there. Uh, it only it's also less uh, space consuming than the uh, than the ox to bat because all it requires is one bridge officer ability and one starship trait slot, which is it also has its ups and downs because a starship trait slot can be a very powerful thing. So using one entire starship trait slot to uh, dedicate entirely to your bridge officer abilities might be something you want to do, but it also might not be something you want to do. You want to do. You might want to dedicate that to something that's going to more directly affect your damage. So really, in the end, that one's going to be up to you. So the fact that Improved Photonic Officer is a Starship trait and will consume a Starship trait slot, that could be considered a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it. So it's really going to be depending on you and you know what else you want to end up putting on your Starship traits and you know how much room you're going to have. Uh, the other big downside with this one is how Improved Photonic Officer is obtained, because this is only available through the Tholian Iktomi, which is a low-buy ship. So that means the ship this trait is obtainable from is a single character unlock in most cases, because you have to buy it through either the low-buy store, or you can get it on the exchange if you have the EC for it, but it's not going to be... It's not going to be super cheap. Like, the, uh, the Iktomi... Low-buy store ships are generally... F you know, it's somewhat cheap, but the uh, because of how valuable Improved Photonic Officer is, the Iktomi is generally a bit more pricey than several of the other low buy ships. Though on the upside, it also means it's also very much in demand, so it's pretty easy to find. It's pretty easy to see it in like a in good stock. There's usually always people looking to buy the Iktomi. However, there is another method of getting the Iktomi because it is also available in a Muds bundle. Uh, what was it called? The uh, the Muds Awesome Mixed Choice Pack Volume One. Who's naming these things? Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, so if you get that MUDS bundle, you'll be able to pick up the Iktomi uh, fully unlocked on your entire account, which will be really convenient if you really like science builds or if you just want uh, a somewhat simple way of reducing your bridge officer cooldowns. Now, the way you want to set this one up is kind of the opposite of how you would want to set up the Ox to Bat setup in that you want to put you want to make sure that Improved Photonic Officer is at the front of your spam bar rather than at the back of it, like with Ox to Bat. So you want to make sure that this is active before you start activating all your other bridge officer abilities, because their cooldowns won't be reduced if Photonic Officer isn't already active. So you can see this is active and the cooldowns are kind of jumping lower and lower while this is active. And some of them are already on minimal, like uh, Emergency Power to Ox here. Sorry, this really isn't the best demonstration because because this is an EPG build, uh, most of these abilities need targets in order to fire, so I can't really spam a bunch of stuff here. But trust me, uh, Photonic Officer, just keep it active. These cooldowns will all be shortened at, while this is active, so it's, it's, it's a good method. 
Now the last method we'll be talking about is the Boimler effect, and it is called that because it utilizes the personal space trait, the Boimler effect. What the Boimler effect does is that it reduces the bridge officer cooldowns of your other bridge officer abilities while you're activating more bridge officer abilities. So as long as you are continually spamming your bridge officer abilities, Boimler effect has a chance to lower the cooldowns of any of any other abilities that are already on cooldown. So you just want to keep going down the list, keep spamming, keep spamming, keep spamming and Boimler Effect will do its thing. As you can see, some of these are already on minimal cooldown thanks to Boimler Effect. Well, mostly Boimler Effect. There's a bit more to this method. With a 17.5% chance, Boimler Effect is effective, but it's not 100% guaranteed to get all your stuff on bridge on all your bridge officer abilities onto minimal cooldown. So you kind of want to use this one in supplementation with something else. And one of the common ways to do that is with one of these of 47 duty officers. One of these guys. The way these of 47 duty officers work is, or at least the bridge officer cooldown ones work, is that uh, they will have uh, either they will have a uh, a main division and a specialization division uh, on them, and they will affect the cooldowns of those abilities. So, uh, like 39 to 47 here uh, will have a chance to reduce uh, the cooldown of miracle worker abilities every time I use a tactical ability, and vice versa. So every time I use a miracle work, every time I use a tactical ability, uh, it will reduce uh, the cooldown of my miracle worker abilities as well. That's really useful on this ship because obviously my uh, tactical abilities, you know, fire at will, uh, torpedo spread, those are my main firing modes. Chemocyte's also nice to have on a lower cooldown. And then uh, my uh, miracle worker abilities, those are some of my more powerful buffs on the build. So narrow sensor bands and mixed armament synergy because this is a miracle worker ship. So I want to have those uh, up more often. But the others, they're going to be a little not quite on minimal cooldown. They have a chance to get on minimal cooldown, but uh, it's still going to be kind of RNG based. Um, if I really wanted to uh, further uh, further help this one out, uh, there are some ways I, I could do that. I can introduce another uh, of 47 guy. Like there's one that'll reduce uh, for Intel. I could do like the one for Intel and maybe science or engineering. So I could do that. Um, I wouldn't go with full three because that's a little overkill. Uh, and also just because at that point you may as well just, well, I was about to say, at that point, you may as well go with an Octobat build, but no, I mean, Boimler Effect still is less uh, space consuming than uh, two seats of Octobat, because, uh, I mean, where would I put Octobat here? I'd have to give up like half my engineering stuff, and I kind of need the, most of that where it is. So that that is kind of the the give and take with this one. It's uh, it's very RNG based with uh, with the Boimler Effect and the L47 guys, but at the same time, it's it's so... It, it takes up so little space. It's so much more freeing than the others, which is why I really like this method the best. Now, aside from the RNG base, the other big downside to this method is that it's also probably the most expensive one because one, the Boimler effect is a low buy store uh, personal trait. So you can buy it on the exchange, but even then it's still going to be pretty expensive. It's not going to be expensive as like improved photonic officer because that comes off of a ship, but still a low buy store trait is still going to be very expensive, but really the really expensive part for this is going to be uh, the duty officers because you're going to need, if, especially if you have multiple ships, you're basically going to need one of these for every specialization and possibly even for the normal divisions as well, depending on your build, because like the, the tactical America worker really suits this build very well. But if I were using like a science build on using this setup, I would definitely want to use like science and temporal instead. Here, I found the list on the Stow Wiki. All the bridge officer cooldown guys of the of 47 duty officers, they are all the free association uh, duty officers. So it's uh, everything from 33 to 47 of 47. And each one has a different cooldown method. Uh, so like 33 over here will cool down uh, engineering and command abilities. Uh, 38 will do tactical and command. Uh, 43 will do science and command. But yeah, you get the idea. So. Uh, if you really want to cover all your bases, you're going to need as many of these guys as possible. And trust me, these duty officers are not cheap. Like they they were fairly expensive when they were new and they've only gotten even more expensive. And like some of these duty officers I've seen sell close to the price of a ship, depending on which one it is. Espe the tactical one, the tactical ones, especially these are probably like the more expensive ones, too, like especially like for the more valuable uh, specializations like the tactical miracle worker run or the tactical intel uh, those are going to be really expensive the engineering ones probably not so much but uh, the science ones the science temporal one especially is going to be very expensive 
The big pain with these is that these of 47 duty officers don't drop like typical duty officer packs. Uh, they're actually more rare, uh, so they'll only drop as like uh, individual as like the individual uh, of 47 duty officer. You only get the one. It'll be completely random. And ever since they were removed into the infinity lock boxes, the odds of getting them are even more rare because they're jumbled up with all the other crap that's overflowing in the infinity lock boxes. So these days, getting these things is very hard to get. So unless you already have a bunch of these, uh, the Boimler effect method is not something I would recommend to uh, newer players. Or at least I wouldn't recommend it as I have it set up here with Boimler Effect and a Borg Duty Officer because, you know, this is going to be a very expensive method to pull off to really do it effectively. But uh, there are other ways you can implement these because one of the nice ways, one of the nice things about all of these methods really is that you can kind of mix and match them a bit. Like one thing I could do is like if I, you know, am I like if I'm concerned about getting more of these my bridge officer abilities onto a minimal cooldown, I could go into my space reputation traits and find the ability uh, chrono capacitor array to get a little extra uh, recharge time on my bridge officer ability. Just throw that in a little, little replace that with that. Boom, get an extra like 9.4 percent if I have the rank two version. So that that'll help a little bit. But it goes further than that, like like going back to the uh, the improved photonic officer setup, like say I have improved photonic officer, but I only have room for uh, in, for if photonic officer one. So let's switch that up. So if photonic officer one not going to be quite as effective as photonic officer two. So I could make up for that by throwing in the Boimler effect into the personal traits to make up for the lower level of photonic officer. Or if I'm using an Oxtabat setup and let's say I don't have room for two seats of Oxtabat, I could uh, ditch one seat of Oxtabat and instead supplement that with um, uh, with a Photonic Officer instead of the second Oxtabat seat, which uh, apparently don't have Photonic Officer on the on this Bridge Officer. That's a little embarrassing, but you, you get my idea. You can uh, so if you're running an Oxtabat setup, uh, you could just stick with one seat of Oxtabat and then supplement it with a seat of Photonic Officer. Photonic Officer 2 would be better, like, you know, just like with the other case, but you could probably get away with Photonic Officer 1. And then, like I did earlier, you could then throw in Chrono Capacitor Array. I almost forgot the name. You could throw that in to the personal traits to make up for uh, Photonic Officer 1. But yeah, you get you can you can mix and match these idea these ideas basically. So don't feel like you have to strictly stick to one method. You can kind of Mix them up a little bit, see what best works for you, because again, you know, every ship is different. Not everything is going to have the same setup. Not everything is going to have room for the same setup as you would on another ship. So you, you kind of have to work with what you got. So you feel free to, you know, scramble them up a little bit, see what happens. Oh, side note, if you are going to go the uh, the uh, Octobat uh, Photonic Officer route, we call that a half bat build, by the way. So where you use uh, uh, Octobat with uh, Photonic Officer, uh, you're still going to want the three technicians because the only way Oxtabat works is you need the three technicians, but uh, you, you will not need improved Photonic Officer mixed into that mix. So yeah, just just to be clear on that. What would be smart is if I just switch to a bridge officer that had Photonic Officer. So yeah, uh, a half bat build should look something like this. So uh, seat of Oxtabat, seat of Photonic Officer, preferably two, but I only got room for one on this one, and then still having the three technicians. Again, this is why I don't really like the ox to bat build uh, method or even a half bat build anymore. It's just because it takes up so much room. So yeah, those are the three best methods for lowering the bridge officer cooldowns on any of your builds. But, you know, like I said in the video, you can mix and match those however you like, you know, to you know, get whatever results that you feel like best uh, fit you or just to fit in whatever best suits uh, your build or the ship that you're running on. So, you know, it's... I guess it's not really appropriate to say those are the three best ways because there's a lot of crossover there. I hope you found this guide helpful. Like I said, there are other methods of lowering your cooldowns as well, but these I think are like the three more popular methods uh, among the community to do them. So, uh, but if you have anything, uh, any other bridge officer cooldown methods that you prefer that I didn't cover on this list, you know, throw, down, throw them down in the comments down below. Uh, or if you found any of these methods helpful, again, you know, Throw a comment, whatever. Engagement, do do something. Just, just hit all the buttons, please. <laughs> uh, anyway, though, uh, while you're down there, be sure to like, subs like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, check out the merch store uh, if you like. If you're ever shopping on the Epic Game Store, be sure to use my content creator code STU1701. It really does help me out, and I really do appreciate it. Either way, though, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.